Have you ever taken your electric bicycle out and ridden with someone not on an electric bike and found it hard to keep the same pace as them, like they were going too slow? Well, I had that problem the past weekend when I was out on a bike ride with my family on the bike trail, and the problem was when I was in PAS1, they were only going five miles an hour, and PAS1 is around seven to eight miles per hour, and every time I engaged the pedals, it would go faster than them, then I would have to let off, and then go faster than them, let off. And I didn't have a problem keeping the same pace with just a throttle, but if you're like me, you like to contribute a little bit in the pedals for two reasons. One, because it's gonna extend your battery life, and two, because you still do wanna get some exercise when you're on your bike. I'm gonna show you guys here a little bit later in this video exactly how to do that. But first and foremost, I wanna thank all my subscribers. These past few months have been amazing. My channel's been growing like crazy. I mean, at least in my eyes, I'm still very small, but I wanna thank all of you that have commented on my videos, that have shared my videos. Hit that like button. It really means a lot and is what keeps me going on making these videos for you guys. I'm glad that you all find my videos interesting. That's what makes me keep going and creating these videos for you. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you guys find this interesting and want to see more stuff like this. Hope you guys enjoy this video and in the very end I'm going to finish this time lapse of the ride that we had if you guys are interested in watching something like that. So let's go ahead and get into it guys. So Thanks for watching. we're on the bike trail down Cedar Creek the first ride of the year. We brought the electric bike out and uh, my wife's bike and then my kid's bike side back here somewhere. So far we went 1.2 miles and I'm going to talk a little bit about it during the trip today. This is the first time I've really had the bike out on pretty much level ground. Usually I've been riding it around uh, like hilly areas and stuff around my house. So we're going to maybe do a little bit of a distance thing today to see how far we get, how much battery we drain. I uh, started off with a full battery. The only bad thing I've noticed guys while on this trip so far is that it's been very difficult to uh, go as slow as they are going when I'm in PAS1. When I'm in PAS1, it wants to go seven to eight miles per hour and they've only been pedaling around five miles an hour. So it seems like I've been constantly starting to pedal, the motor would kick in then stopping. Now I did help that out a little bit by going into the settings and set the settings so that the motor doesn't kick in until more re revolutions on the pedals. And I can put it in cruise control, which if you guys haven't seen that, I'll put a link above or below in the description. Um, I was able to set cruise control to five miles per hour, but if you do that, then you're not pedaling at all and not putting any effort at all into it. All right guys, so I just figured out this awesome feature with cruise control, and if you guys haven't tried this yet, and you wanna go slower than your PAS1, this is, this is amazing. Uh, something so simple, but amazing. Maybe some of you already know this, but when you're, you set your cruise control in PAS1, right now I have it set for five miles per hour because that's what my wife's pedaling behind me. Now before when I was in PAS1, it was going a little bit too fast, wanting to go about seven to eight miles per hour. So I set the cruise to five miles per hour. And then the problem was every time I tried to pedal, after I had my settings set for more rotations, the motor would still kick in after three revolutions of the pedals. Well, once you set your cruise control, you could turn your PAS off and your cruise control stays on. And you could pedal all you want and it's still gonna assist you once you hit under that five miles per hour mark, or you can quit pedaling and it stay at five, but if you wanna pedal a little harder or put a little bit of effort into it, then you can and it doesn't take off. So that's an awesome feature to have guys. You guys, if like I said, if you wanna go slower than what the motor allows you, this is an awesome feature to have. All right guys, so now I'm down by West Newton. We're headed back. I made, um, I think this is a mile marker sign here, 114, and it says it's three miles back to Cedar Creek where I started from, so I'm gonna reset the odometer and see how accurate it is. We'll find out whenever I get there. All right guys, now we're just headed back. All right, bud, I'm recording you. Go cool, cool trick. Hey, babe. So we're now at mile marker 111. We started at 114. That's three miles. And 
the bike only says 2.1. There's no way that this speed or uh, odometer is accurate anywhere near close to being accurate. Um, I'm actually questioning these, just wondering if they're accurate, but they probably are. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. I'm gonna have to check it another time with a GPS and uh, go from there, but that's crazy that if you go 2.1 miles, you actually go three. If that's the case, this bike gets way more than 20 miles per charge. From my initial testing on my initial battery drain, it must get way more than 20 miles per charge if that's the case. All right guys, so I just set a waypoint back there about 0.3 miles away. And I'm gonna go exactly one mile on my bike and then I have Google Maps. I'm gonna see how far my speedometer is off with Google on the way back. All right guys, so I just reached exactly one mile on my speedometer and going by the waypoint that I set before I left to go back there it says it is exactly 1.3 miles so every mile I go you actually go 1.3 miles so I'm gonna do a little further testing on this but it's definitely way off all right guys so I just got done on the bike trail there I'm gonna pack them up on the overdrive sport 2 rack uh, this is actually the overdrive sport 4 but I only have it set up for two bikes right now uh, my odometer says I went uh, a little over six miles but in reality i went a little over eight that's how far the odometer is off um so yeah my initial my initial testing if i can get 20 miles around home on hills that's actually about 26 miles of range got the first bike up on there like that You guys want to see a full uh, detailed uh, description or a full detailed setup of this rack and how it works and everything uh, I did a video I'll put a link up above here for you guys to watch if you haven't seen that yet but I definitely recommend this rack so let me strap the wheel first see a little easier to strap the wheel on so I started out with about, come closer bud. So I, I started out with about a full charge, which was 54.2 or 3, 54.2 volts. And I still ended with about uh, 50 volts, or no, about 49 volts. Uh, my uh, meter still says full charge. Oh, hold on, I gotta unlock that one. I had that one locked. I'm gonna do with the key. So on a six mile ride, I only used about three volts of charge on level ground and uh, never went above PAS one. Well, I did hit PAS two once or twice to catch up with these guys, but uh, overall I stayed in PAS one. Yeah guys, I hope you found that cruise control uh, feature interesting and helpful. I know I found it very helpful on this, on this ride here. Uh, definitely a feature you guys need to know about go slower so if you guys like that uh, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any more content like this and don't forget to hit the thumbs up and please place a comment below it really helps the uh, YouTube algorithm out with uh, uh, with recommending my video and it helps my channel grow, grow and I appreciate that guys and I will see you on the next one thanks for watching